Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use the Inspector Developer tool in a browser in order to uh, basically focus in on an area of a web page. Okay, so uh, my students are currently working on final exams in web development, and this is an example of a student's work. Now, this is phase one of the final exam where the student just had to make the web page layout uh, that was responsive. So let me go ahead and press uh, F12 on my keyboard, make sure my browser is active. F12 on my keyboard, and that's going to open up the console. Uh, Control-Shift-I often works as well. And you can access this kind of console from different browsers. I'm using Brave, which is a Chromium-based uh, browser. Uh, similar things can happen in Chrome itself or Firefox. And I haven't tried the latest versions of Edge, but uh, it's probably something in there too. Now as I'm grading this portion of this exam, we're supposed to have a responsive layout that has a header at the top. This looks great by the way, or very, very good. Um, we got four blocks and then a footer, and then for tablet we have a header, six blocks and the footer. And then for widescreen, header moves over to the left, six blocks and the footer. And for the most part, things are looking pretty nice, but I can see that the footer is a little bit off. So on wider layouts, the footer is just a little bit narrower than the rest of the content. And when the page is narrower, um, actually we can see when it goes wider, it's a little bit wider. And then when the page is a little bit narrower, um, these blocks are pushed all the way to the far right edge. There sh you know, should be about 95% was part of the exam requirement, 95% uh, centered. So I can tell there's something off. And this is where the inspector comes in really, really handy. So I've got my console open, my developer tools. That was just F12. And then I'm going to click on this little inspector button. And this allows me to hover over different parts of the web page. And then when I click, I can focus in on that page. So I can clearly see I'm right over here in this teal colored block. This is a the student is using a figure element and dot four. So that means they have class equals four in there. And I can see that it's got a foreground color of black. I can see what the background color is. I can get some pretty good information from just hovering over like this. But I'm mostly interested in this container. So I'm just going to move my mouse to the edge. And I'm looking to just kind of hover over a container part. I can see with my little screen tip that I'm hovering over the body. Let me make this a little bit wider for a moment. And now I can see I'm hovering over the container. It's hard to notice, but over there in the lower left corner, I can see this is a div with an ID container. It's uh, 1400 wide and looks like 900 tall. Let me go ahead and click on that. And as soon as I click on this, my developer tool panel changes a little bit and it's giving me information just about that element. So I can see it's highlighted, okay, it's a div up there. It's showing me the HTML portion of it. But I'm really interested down here in the CSS portion of this container. And you notice it gives me all of the CSS declarations the student has written. And I've got little check boxes. I can actually start to turn these things off and on. So I can turn off the width and turn off uh, the max width. And we can see that that has an impact on how this page is displayed. I'll go and turn those back on. Now the other nice thing I can do with this console is I can click over here and I can create a new declaration. So I want to give a little insight to the student. So I can go ahead and put in something like an outline two pixels a solid red. And now I have a visual indicator of where that container is and you can start to see where things might be going awry. This is all before, you know, officially inspecting the HTML and CSS. And we can see, all right, now we can see the boundaries of that container and I can see that the footer is quite nicely sized within the container. And so the issue is not with the footer the issue apparently has something to do with these six blocks. So that gives us an area to focus on when we're looking to make improvements. I'm not going to view the full source code of this page, but that would let us know where we need to focus our attentions on to fix this problem. So that's a pretty nice way that you can use the inspector to turn declarations off and on, but also you can add new declarations. Now, of course, this is not affecting the website's HTML. It's only affecting the downloaded version that you're looking at on your browser. So if I were to refresh this page, this would all go away. It's back to its default. Let me show you something else that's pretty neat with this little inspector tool. I'm just going to head over to a big site. I'll go over to Amazon.com. <laughs> And let's say I wanted to investigate a little bit about Amazon's sprite images. If you're not aware of sprite images, they're pretty neat. Let me go ahead and press F12 
turn my uh, console on, I'm going to click on my inspector, which I can see here on my Windows machine is Control Shift C. I never use that keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to hover over, um, I'm going to hover over this little gear. I uh, see this little, uh, this little settings icon. I'm going to click on that and it's showing me where it is in the HTML right up here on the top. But look at this. It's also showing me down here um, the CSS, including this background image. And it gives me a web address right there. In fact, I can even take this web address, copy it, go to a new tab, paste, and now I have access to Amazon's sprite image. And this is kind of a neat way to get to this image. And then you could, in some cases, you could use it for yourself. Some of these things would certainly be copyrighted, but it's certainly a good way to see how sprite images are still being used on big websites. So Amazon is certainly doing this, and I'm sure other big sites like um, uh, YouTube, I know, um, uses these quite a bit as well. But basically, we clearly have this one master image, and Google, or I'm sorry, Amazon is just simply changing the position of this image to show different portions of it. So I can see their Facebook logo, uh, the Twitter logo, and of course, there's that gear shift. They have a dark gray version and a lighter gray version, and they're simply changing the display of these. In fact, you notice when I hover over this little uh, settings gear, it goes from the light gray to the dark gray. And all they're doing here is on hover is basically they're shifting the position of this background image. But once again, it's just kind of a neat tool that you can use to explore different parts of your own websites or bigger websites. Another way I've used this pretty successfully is in studying a WordPress theme. So WordPress themes come with a huge CSS library, of course. And if you just want to start to tinker with it to modify that WordPress theme, it's sometimes, sometimes helpful. Just hover over a particular element, click on it, see how you can change it before making the official change. So there you go. That's the uh, web developer's tools and the inspector. Take care.